Morning, G3 Investors. This is Greg Gallagher. It's April 23rd, or 24th, Friday. And um, I prom as promised, I'm going to show you how I day trade SQQ. Uh, and this is from April 23rd, yesterday. And, um, okay, first thing I do is I look at the red line as my guide. Okay, and this, this darkened area here is the futures. Okay, that's the stock market futures. SQQ is heavily traded, so there's robust futures out there. And so I want to enter above that or around that red line right there, which if you go out there and look, that was at 1330. So when I sent out, uh, you know, the um, setup schedule, that's what you would have seen. The buy point or the pivot point would have been set at 1330 for entry. Okay, now I don't enter the trade unless something big happens. Okay, like in this now, the white section is the trading has started. Okay, so you can see the big volume down here, and that's the market makers, you know, getting all the overnight orders and things adjusted and set up and everything. So I do kind of watch the volume, and I also have a MACD down here. And I'll have to explain that because it'll take too long. But uh, it, it's it's a guide again. Everything is a guide, but I, I trade on price. Okay, I buy at a at a, a certain price, and I sell at a higher price. And sometimes I don't sell at all. But in this case, because we're up thirty seven percent for the year. Okay, so I'm trading a little more than normal. I bought a thousand shares at twelve eighty. Now, why didn't I buy at thirteen thirty? Well, because this red line, the ten minute uh, moving average, went down. Okay, and when it crossed it here, okay, it just happened to be at twelve eighty. So, and I don't know if if you guys got that when I sent that out or not in time, but I can't I can't trade and send that information out at the same time. So. That's why I'm going over how I do it. It's not hard. Uh, it, it's just, well, it kind of is hard. You kind of got to watch what you're doing. So when you're day trading and a 10 minute bar, most day traders don't use a 10 minute bar. So I use one minute, three minute, five minute. I don't do that anymore. I mean, I can't, I can't look at the screen like that. I got to go away and do something else. But this low here is what I would set my initial st stop loss at so 1250 that you know it's, it says 1255 out there i don't know if you can see the numbers again but that's what it says so when i when i bought here i look back clear down here i can't do the one two three because these are 10 minute bars okay i can't do the backwards one two three and set it there i'd get stopped out too quickly so uh, then i use this as a guide after after the trade happened see it came down it didn't get anywhere near my 1250, okay? Uh, you know, and, and that's that's a big risk. You know, eight, I don't normally take that kind of risk, you know, and buy 1,000 shares. Normally, I'd buy 500 or 400 or something like that. But as I said, we're up for the year. And this market, in my opinion, is going to roll over at some point in time. And I'm trying to catch that move. Okay, and I'm also trying to protect any pro long positions we have. Well, we don't have very much long, so as I said yesterday, it was kind of a boring day. Anyway, so it guts up here, goes up here and does this. This is probably, that means it traded clear up to 1330. Now, I don't know what happened there. Maybe somebody had a, a limit order in or something and, and it got filled. That's where the market makers will do that. So you have to be careful how you put your 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 orders in. You know, I, I don't let them know what I'm going to do. I, I do it by, by market orders. I just put a market order out there and say, if when it hits 1280, I'm buying it. Okay. Or if it doesn't, I'll go up to 12. I, I would go up to 1290. I didn't draw a line in, but I would go up as high as that. So like if I missed it here, I could still get it here. And, and that's the thing about trading. You don't, I know it seems like, oh my God, I got to do this. If I don't get in, I'll never get in. It doesn't mean anything. If you missed this whole thing, you could have got in, you know, you could have got in here if you wanted and bought it twelve ninety five. It still would have been okay because you're watching the movement of this thing. And what we're really looking for, we're looking for this last 10 minutes. 
Now see what I like here as I move the stops up, okay, and I can use a percentage or in this case, I just watch it. So I'm like, boy, this is acting pretty good. And, you know, and so I had the decision to make. Do I sell all of it, sell half of it, or hold it all overnight? You know, and that, that was my joke. What are you going to do, punk, dirty Harry? Okay, so I decided to hold it all overnight. Okay, now why? Well, I, it's hard to explain. It's a feeling. I'm hooked on a feeling. Um, deal reeling, blah, blah, blah. No. Okay, on to the next thing here. Uh, Tim Capel moved up to the big time. He moved from uh, the Tier 1 patron to two, Tier 2. So welcome aboard to Tim Capel. Uh, you know, there we are. That's it. What I would do want to do is just kind of go over the setups. Now, that what's going to happen this morning? Okay, I don't know. But here's uh, the, the major economic reports that are coming out. Durable goods orders, ca core capital goods, and consumer sentiment. I think that's the Michigan consumer sentiment. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I got this little thing up here because I like to color code things. That means it's just a bad report. It's really ugly or caution. I'm saying caution because these two things can move the market. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and send out this as I'm gonna show you. You know, now see here here it is. You can see this is gonna come out to the tier two uh, people right now and uh, or very soon, and that's our positions and and right now that's at 1650. Okay, so that's the only one I see now. This is a little more active than it normally is. Now, I didn't collar those, okay? And, oh, no, Greg, you didn't collar stuff, you know? I, I do that all the time. Okay, talk to myself and, okay. Now, there, I, I didn't fill that one in because, you know, we, we got an opportunity in this gold. Uh, do you remember when I tell, told everybody about how there was, there was too much paper trading oil when you have a, a supply shortage, then that means the paper is worthless. Well, it's just the opposite on gold. GLD, there's not enough gold, okay, that people can't buy it, okay? Uh, the difference between what you can buy GLD and real gold is like, I don't know, if you if you did the net asset value on GLD, it'd probably be, you'd be buying it somewhere around in the neighborhood of $1,600 an ounce. Uh, you know, or 1650 or 1750. I don't do the math because I'm just I'm just trading it. I'm not going to own it long term. But the point I'm making here is there's not enough gold, so the paper becomes can can get and it, right now real gold. I, I bet you if you tried to buy a, a gold coin, it cost you eighteen or nineteen hundred dollars. Okay, so that means there's a real opportunity here. Okay. We don't have enough paper chasing the real price of gold. And part of that is due to the monetary differences between the United States and Europe and all that. And it, it gets too complicated for me to really understand. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out. So again, I'm not looking for the market. But, you know, when, when these reports come out, you know, at, they're all due out at 830. It could change. It could change things. Now, if it does, then, hey, I was wrong on holding it overnight and. I'll have to get out sometime this morning. If not, I expect this to go up substantially higher. Now, I don't have it set up, but it, let's take a look at that, okay? So what would I do today, okay? Well, there we are, we're right back. We're about at 13, this is the SQQ, and see there's our red line again, and we're in that, the futures, now it's back there. Now, again, I probably wouldn't set it up at the 1350 I would say a good entry is 1330 okay just if I was just starting to trade it today okay why would I say that well because it was the same back here and this didn't last very long okay so that's a judgment call how do I come up with it and there it closed at 1325 so if it goes down here why wouldn't I get in at 1325 if I want to hedge my positions so it's just it's just that simple well, that's it for this brief message. It's Greg Gallagher with G3 Investors. Uh, good, good luck and good trading.